What's up, y'all, and welcome to Cities and Urban Land Use, Part 5. In this video, we're going to continue looking at urban geography and ask this essential question. How does land value and distance affect the urban landscape? First of all, talking about urban morphology, the layout of a city, looking essentially at its form and its structure. Another term you need to know is functional zonation, or basically the division of the city into different regions, or zones, for certain purposes or functions. This graphic does a pretty good job of showing you the different kinds of zones that you might see in an urban area. For example, you have like your downtown regions. You also would have things like the commercial zones, where you would have a lot of shopping going on. You also see where you have the industrial zones, or manufacturing. And all around those areas, you can see where you would have major residential zones. What urban planners often do is that they will make sure that the different zones can only have one type of activity on it. Now, a specific kind of zone we can look at is the CBD, or what's called the Central Business District. That is the economic, or the commercial, essentially sometimes even the geographic heart of a city. It's what people often call the downtown area of a city. Now, another kind of place is the Central City. That's the CBD and the older housing, so the original part of a city. Here you can see, of course, is Cairo. And if you move even further out, you get to the suburbs or the suburban area, which is outside of the central city. In this case, in Cairo, you don't see true suburbs, but you do see some housing projects being done outside. One thing to consider when we see the different zones is the value of land that happens as you move further away from the CBD. As you can see in this simple graphic, if you look at the land value going from low to high, as you move further away from the central downtown region, you can see that it actually goes down in value because it's less desirable as you move further and further away. And of course, there's also more land available. So as you increase your distance from the downtown area, there's a trade-off between the land value and the distance. To better understand why this is, we'll look into bid rent, also known as land rent. In 1960, Professor William Alonzo published his work on bid rent theory, which hypothesized how the cultural landscape formed in urban environments. His ideas were clearly influenced by von Thunen's work investigating the impact of land rent through his model of the isolated state. Essentially, the price and demand for real estate changes as the distance from the central business district, or CBD, increases. There is competition between businesses and individuals for limited land in order to maximize profits, and certain land uses are more profitable closer to the CBD, whereas others reap more profits further away. One of the key factors in determining profitability is accessibility, or the ease in which it is possible for people, and especially customers, to reach a location. And accessibility can be measured in terms of the cost, time, and effort it takes to reach a location. And like virtually everything else, the degree of accessibility can change for a plethora of reasons. Here are a few. If the infrastructure changes, such as the development of a light rail line offering cheap public transportation, accessibility could increase. Or if population growth expands, causing more congestion, accessibility could decrease. Of course, cultural attitudes often change, which can affect the profitability of a given location in terms of how far people are willing to travel for a good or service. Site characteristics or the quality of an area clearly affect accessibility as does the situation of a particular business at a location. So we must consider other activities offered around it, and especially competing businesses. So, for instance, in this graphic, banks require great access to a massive number of people to be profitable, so they must be often located very close to the CBD, whereas most agricultural activities are more profitable further away. This image shows the downtown area of Topeka, the capital of Kansas, back in 1960. The three-dimensional map shows Topeka's land values. Note the extremely high bid rent in the CBD, with a few smaller peaks in some secondary centers. Even though it is the state capital, Topeka isn't what we would call a metropolis, and the land value decreases dramatically only a few miles away from the city center. Many cities, especially the larger ones, do not see the bid rent drop quite as quickly as you can see in this graphic that shows a less steep decline as distance increases, especially when considering multiple land uses. 
However, most cities in the MDCs of the world do not have a single CBD, but many, with one main CBD and several other secondary agglomerations. And this graphic shows the hypothetical bid rent of an urban area resembling a circus tent, with land values increasing around secondary centers. Now let's get down to brass tacks here. An acre of land in an urban area could have a plethora of housing types. For instance, you could have 42 small apartments, 12 townhouses, 5 single-story detached houses, or 2 new split-level homes. As you can see, once you travel further from the CBD, there are larger and more expensive homes. Now, if you look at the actual rent, the value increases as you move away from the CBD. However, looking at the overall total rent per acre, the bid rent, you can see the actual value decreases. This is because the CBD is the property with the most accessibility to people and customers, so therefore, it is in the most demand and the most expensive land. Just outside the CBD, you would see a greater degree of vertical development, likely some skyscrapers with relatively cheap apartments per unit. However, altogether, the bid rent is higher. And as you travel further away, where people have more space but less desirable land for most businesses, the cost per person may increase, but the overall bid rent decreases. Looking at this graph showing the density profile of New York City, you can see how the density dips around the main CBD, which is downtown Manhattan. Here, the rent is the most expensive, so the landscape is inundated mostly with stores, offices, and high-rises, and only the rich can reasonably afford to live here. However, just outside the main CBD is usually the most dense urban area, with multi-story apartments and fewer businesses. Many lower-income service jobs can be found in the CBD, and so the lower-skilled workers are close by due to cost and convenience. Since New York City is an enormous megacity within the United States, many other boroughs surround it, places such as Brooklyn and Queens, so their major CBDs exhibit greater density as well. Further out, as more space is available and the bid rent declines, more families can afford homes. And even further out, you typically find even nicer homes in the suburbs, which are separate residential communities within commuting distance of a city. And you can see many other cities exhibit similar density profiles, especially those in the MDCs. These cities follow the basic human patterns predicted by bid rent theory. However, it doesn't work for all cities. Moscow, for example, was a city that was largely built up during the Soviet communist era. So the government was exclusively responsible for urban planning. And the free market principles that allow people to make their own choices were not in play. Well, 